This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. <laughs> Talk about dumping him on his butt. A fisherman. Wow! Shark fishing with a topwater. A conservationist. Don't be bashful. Go on out. A family man. Woo, baby. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. All right, look at this deer right here. This is what most deer farmers are trying to grow. A great big framey, typical white-tailed deer. And, and in today's market, they're really tough to grow, but there is a one guy up in Missouri that does this consistently, produces big frame, typical bucks. His name is Kevin Grace. He owns Whitetail Sales and Service. And on today's show, we're gonna show you some remarkable deer, but we're gonna share with you, or I'm gonna have Kevin share with you, his a method. Uh, and there is a method in growing consistent, typical frame, big frame, white-tailed deer. Here at Whitetail Sales, we like to uh, treat our deer with roughage every night, and we cut a lot of tree limbs. We are treating our deer with our favorite treat in the world, leaves. Provide them with a roughage. We provide the leaves so we can check the health of the deer every day. So Colin can easily maintain the deer when we feed and, and leaf. He can see the health, make sure everybody's in good condition. We also provide them with a roughage that their bodies deserve. Remember, they're a browser, they're not a grazer, so they love to do this. They like it a lot. We, we provide these leaves every night. They need it to keep pruning them going well. It also keeps them nice and calm, and it's a good time for me to be able to check the animals, make sure there's no health issues going on. Um, keeps them calm, used to me. Uh, it's a very good tool. They enjoy it. Um, it's, it's real nice to just keep hands on with your deer and make sure there's no health issues. All right, so how old are these bucks in this pen? This group in here is two and three-year-olds that we're looking at right now. Wow. Look at the frame on them. I mean, they're, they're just all of them, big framey deer. That great man with us got the, the drop on him. Keith, that's payday. That's a two-year-old, if you can believe that. Everything that's pink or a fuchsia tag is a two-year-old here today. And the green tags are three-year-olds. But the one you just asked about the deer we call payday. That's beyond control on the top side. Right. White 99 on the bottom side, which was one of our foundation bucks that we started with. Uh, White 99 had a 235 frame, gross 295, which was his best score ever, but just the epitome of the beautiful, typical deer. Beyond Control was one of the largest deer ever in the country at, as a yearling and at two. We lost him at two. He, we had him as a, a borrowed unit. And that's his son, which I believe is going to be the largest framed two-year-old in the nation this year, Keith. I think he's got a 240 frame. I think he's going to gross 350. He's got a little more character extras than we want. Right. 26 inside, sharp. He is. He does have a good look. Okay. Well, you talk about white 99. White 99, in my opinion, is one of the best deer ever, ever. I mean, I, I bred with him on my place. So I, I wound up. I got semen from Kevin and bred with him on my place, and he's throwing really good. Okay. So his name is Payday. Payday. All right. So look at that premier sound right there. I want to point <laughs> that deer out. <laughs> Seven by six mainframe. I believe he's got a 17 inch G2. And we've already talked about, I think Payday is the largest frame tree in the country. I think he can challenge as a second biggest. I think his frame is going to be 230 inches. 17 inch G2. I believe it's close. I think it's very close. 17 inch G2 on a two year old Premier Sun. My goodness gracious. Is that a 2028 Sun right there? Yep, that's a 2028 son. We do have two of them on the farm, so we got that would make them half Texas. Right. And uh, bottom side of that one goes back into foundation dough that we have yellow tin. And we also have one that goes back into the Patrick line. 
Okay. But both 2028 suns are sharp. I mean, they got a good frame, good look. That's what we're looking for here. Well, well, why in the world are you bringing Texas back in here? Because a lot of people down south are trying to bring that northern influence down south. So why in the world would you be bringing that southern influence back up north? Two reasons. I like the typical frames that Texas still offer. That's one reason. The other reason is EHD. The Texas deer definitely have more resistance for EHD. Our goal to here is to raise big, typical deer, big, large frames. We're not looking for extras. We'll take them, but that's not what we're breeding for. With our program, we've geared ourselves to just raise big, framey deer, and we've done that through our doe program. Once you understand the mitochondria and how the female works, there's no in-between. Everything is same with consistency. And that's what we're trying to do is have, offer a consistent product for the consumer that buys our doe line. And as you look around, there is no weak two-year-olds. There is no weak three-year-olds in this group. And we sell all of our bucks at three unless we're breeding with them. We, I want to get in and show you, Keith, I know you and I have talked about this before and you keep asking questions about how it really works and we're going to explain it to you. But there is no such thing as a weak doe here. Every doe is as good as the other one. In a lot of cases, we could open up our doe list with our groups and let you pick what does you want. If you like the way our show looks on your television set, you're going to absolutely love it when you see it in full HD online. And you can watch it on my website 24-7 free of charge at keithwarren.net. Take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. Consistency is what we're trying to establish on this farm and have done. And I want to explain to you all how we've done that. Now, everyone in the country works off of their doe lines that are big, important breeders, we'll say. But no one has done it the way we've done it. What we've done is taken six females, six doe lines, and we keep six out of each group. And in this case, we have doe yellow 148, pink 0028, yellow 107, and there are seven does on this board. There's six pedigrees, and we have twin sisters right here. And we've taken these doe lines, and everything in this case goes back to split two. This yellow 148 goes back to split two. Now this is very important. If you notice, every doe on this board goes back to split two. This is one of our six groups. One of our six groups. We've established consistency by working with the same maternal mitochondria female side. Every case, whether or not it is a great great granddaughter or a direct daughter, we have established the consistency of split two, which we have found to be one of the best throwing frame does in the industry. We were introduced in 2004 to split two, and she had the largest typical frame buck in the United States in 2004. I liked it. I decided that. Now, we're establishing and showing you one doe line. We work off of six doe lines, and if you do the mathematics, that means we are working with a program of 36 does. No one else in the industry has done what we've done. Everyone has a great dose, but a lot of ranches have does that are not as consistent. We've eliminated the consistency by establishing and developing off of one doe line in six different cases. So if you are looking to purchase consistent, typical frame deer, give us a call or come by and see us. Today we're putting on a beginning deer farmer seminar. Not only are there beginning deer farmers here, but there are also veterans in the business and people that are just curious about getting into it. We put this event on every year just to invite the public out and educate everybody about what our industry is all about. At this event we have men, women, children of all ages, which is very important because this business is really a nice industry to get into for the whole entire family. The biggest obstacle for people getting into the deer industry is the lack of knowledge. There's not a lot of literature out there, which is why we put on this event, and it gives everybody an opportunity to absorb a lot of knowledge at one time and visit with many different farmers. I'm Junior Flowers from Ellington, Missouri, and I'm here today to learn more about raising deer and stuff. For, I just purchased a high fence property, and I'm trying to learn more about it. After this event, we will be taking everybody back to the farm and show them our deer. Here at our farm, we always encourage people to come out and take a look at the deer. Whether you're in the business or not, it's a neat opportunity and our doors are always open. So just give us a call or stop on by. There's usually somebody here at all times. My wife and I are down here at Kevin Grace's 
And we are also new deer farmers. And we got into this a year ago, and the deer that I have seen have just been out of this world. Some huge racks, and Kevin has been so great to us looking at all the time length and the mass that he's putting on these deer. And there's a lot to learn, but I'm learning, and Kevin's been helping me every minute of the way. When Kevin's not around, to, when people come to take farm tours, I'm gonna put them on the ranger and take them out personally myself. It's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by winadeerfarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. This one comes to me from a fellow by the name of Sam. He's uh, from Onalaska, Texas, and that's right next to Lake Livingston. He says, hi Keith, I just want you to know your show kicks butt, man. I will probably never be able to afford to become a deer farmer, but you got me dreaming about it. How could someone that loves deer not want to be a deer farmer? That's a good question. Everybody that I know that is a deer farmer became a deer farmer for one reason. It's because they couldn't get enough of deer three months out of the year, two months out of the year being a deer hunter. All deer farmers I know are deer hunters and we do not hunt the deer on a deer farm. It's just the reason why people become deer farmers is for the love of the deer. It's just simple as that. Yes, it's a business and yes, you can make money at it. But the most important thing about it is it's, it's rewarding. It makes you feel good to be around deer. So someday I hope you can be a deer farmer. I would encourage you to find out more information about it. You know, you can uh, register to winadeerfarm.com where we're gonna be giving away a deer farm this year on our show and, uh, and we'll get somebody all set up. But I gotta admit, deer farming will make you a changed man. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Deer Guardian Misting Systems, DNA Solutions, and the North American Deer Registry. Four Canyons Ranch, Hoff Power Polaris, the Hunter Heritage Foundation, and Record Rack Deer Feeds. When you purchase deer from us, you're going to get one of these right here. This is a DNA certificate showing that the animal has been registered. By getting this, you're going to be ensured that you're getting what you paid for and there will be no questions what your animal is out of. One of the neat things about here in Central and Missouri at Whitetail Sales and Services, they bottle raise all their doe fawns. They do not bottle raise buck fawns. Uh, the reason why they bottle raise the doe fawns is because they want a nice gentle herd and they do have a nice gentle herd. So every one of these deer that they have out here is bred to be uh, consistently producing big, uh, framey, typical bucks. And whether it's a doe or a buck fawn there, that's the genetics that they have. So the cool thing about it is they sell weaned fawns. They sell open does, bred does. Or big bucks but whatever you get here is going to be bred to produce a big consistent framed typical buck hey baby how's that for cool <laughs> check out that one right there Gosh. beyond belief is what we call him that's another beyond control son what a frame five by six frame all long tines 24 inside i believe long beams that's the type of buck Whitetail Sales is trying to consistently produce. Well, I'm looking at them going, you know, the, if these are, if these deer in here are primarily two and there's some threes, uh -huh. there are no small ones in here. There's nothing small. Have you cherry picked and pulled the culls out or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds good, but it'd be, I don't know where that pen is, but. Keith, consistent, we keep talking about consistency. It's not a word we want to wear out, but it's a word that we utilize. Consistent deer is very important to us. We want the consistent frames. You're taking those six foundation does and going back to those lines, all these deer are gonna go back to one of those six lines. Every one of these deer on this farm will go back to those six lines. Every one of them has a, like the split two line that we've talked about. Right. That mother will be in a partial of every one of these. She will be the anchor doe. Okay, and DNA certificates on every Everything. Everything's been DNA'd for I think six years now. Every animal at birth is DNA on this farm for six years. But do you like the consistency? I mean, look at that bucky son we have over there. Big wide buck, five by six frame. Sure, I wish he was six by six, but I like him. He's got just a little extras with kickouts, and he's nearly 30 inches inside. That buck will breed on our farm this year. We have bucks that's going to outscore him. Hey, look, there's many bucks going to outscore him, but does any of them have a better look, Keith? I know. What the, okay, what's the deal with the deer that's limping around and got three legs? That was a Colin project. When he was three weeks old, he got stepped on in the doe pen by another doe. We mm -hmm. leave all the males on the mamas, and he got stepped on mm -hmm. and shattered that leg. And that was Colin's first year here working for me, and I made Colin do that. And I made him do it to learn health and to learn how to cure infections and stuff. Not only did he keep it alive, 
He saved the leg, now it's short, he's probably missing an inch, inch and a half bone in his leg, but he has the leg, and that one side, the, the, the story they tell you that if the you opposite. have a leg injury, the opposite, it's true right there, you can see it. But look at the frame on the good side. My God, that deer is big and beautiful. Last year he was 29 inches wide as a two-year-old. Not quite that wide this year, but how can you make them any better? I mean, I don't know how in the world I would pick a breeder buck, except because there are so many, so many big ones. I'm going, okay, how do you pick it? I'm seriously, how do you pick it? Shock effect. Really, shock effect. If I look at that deer, right there, look at belief. Look at belief, Gosh. right there. Does that deer not stick out? Just, uh, you look at him, anybody doesn't like the deer, they, they you know, better that's check their the pulse. Deer, if that's the kind of deer I dream of, walking out in front of me at a stand, you know, so that's the kind of deer I want to breed. I think that's the kind of deer every deer farmer wants to breed. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by WinADeerFarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. Kevin Grace has forgotten more about white-tailed deer than most people will ever know. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because you're here. I'm not kidding. I mean, he, he, he lives and breathes white-tailed deer. And, and he wants to share that knowledge. That's the reason why the new deer farmer seminar, that's the reason why getting on the ranger and driving people back and forth, because he wants to share that passion with you, that knowledge with you. And I think that's one of the things that is, for new deer farmers, to me, when I got into deer farming, one of the biggest obstacles I had to overcome was I was intimidated. I really didn't know what in the heck to do. I, and so you take the intimidation factor way down. Okay, I, I've, I've got to point something out to y'all. I'm looking here at all these deer in here and probably the smallest of the two-year-old bucks, the smallest now is 165 inches. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, it's right there. 160, 165, 165 that's is probably gonna grab it. That's the smallest two-year-old on our farm. I don't think we have a three-year-old under 190. Okay, so I remember last year when these guys were yearlings. You had a picture, a big picture, uh -huh. of all your yearling bucks. We can go back and show that picture to what, to, to, and compare it to what we're looking at here. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive to see the difference between one-year-old and two-year-olds, what happens, huh? Uh -huh. It is, Keith. How can I put one of these guys on my place? I live in Texas, it, Texas borders are closed, and I want one of these on my farm. What would I do? How could I get as close to having one of these on the farm? Well, we could do it through semen. It would be the best way to do that. Through semen, and if you don't have a lot of knowledge and you want to get started in the deer business, we actually could even set you up with people in Texas that we could line you up with females. And we could even set you up with an AI technician. That's what we do as a consultation around here. Whitetail oh. Sales is, is an action-packed organization that helps and utilizes and consults all the United States. I'm trying to build my herd based upon the same type of program that you're doing. I mean, off of the does. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really easy to look at the bucks and say, oh, they're just great. But it takes time to build it off the does, doesn't it? It's actually quicker, Keith. I really? think if you're doing using the does, if you've got a chance, an opportunity to bring in the does, you can do it so much quicker through the doe lines than you can the buck lines. Here's what I've noticed, Keith. You take a good proven doe and you could breed her to a lousy buck. And you know what you got? You got a pretty good buck. But you take a lousy doe and you can breed her the best buck in the industry. And in my opinion, you still don't have much. That is what I've seen. I've probably visited more deer farms than anyone in the country. And I see that time and time again. It all goes back to the doe. When you look in the pen and you see the best buck in the pen, you can ask who that is. And then you see the second best buck. And guess what? It probably goes back to the same female line as the biggest buck. And Folks, the next biggest one, you'll see the consistency in the females. And it took you many, many years to get to this point but it doesn't take a new deer farmer near as many years as it took you to get to this point. And the reason why is because you're selling consistency. Consistent lines. Consistent lines that never fail. I'm not having that one great doe on my farm and offering you other stuff. It, it, when you come back to our bucks, you see it. Some people can talk it. You can see the walk right here. It's here. Every buck has a very nice frame. Obviously, we have some stand out a little more than others, but they all have big frames. Like we said, mm -hmm. 160, 165 is the smallest 
two-year-old on here, and he's nearly all frame. And he's got a late number tag, so he's one of the last ones born when he was a fun. All I can say is, wow. I mean, I'm absolutely, I'm blown away. This kind of, it's, it's uh, I'm in shock looking at all your deer. And folks, if y'all want to be in shock too, all you're going to do is show up here out of Eldon, Missouri at Kevin's place. Give him your phone number. 573-392-8230 is our office, or Colin's number, my manager, is 409-626-4086. Call us. And like I said earlier, make sure and bring Excuse your heart pills with you because I promise you, you're going to be blown away. Kevin, thank you. Come to Show Me State and he'll show you, all right? All right, Keith. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Unbelievable. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer in the country, Hoff Power Polaris. If you'd like to watch full episodes of our programs, 24-7 online in full HD, log on to my website at keithwarren.net. There, you'll find the shows, but you'll also find a lot of outtakes and behind-the-scenes videos as well. That's keithwarren.net. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories are provided by Whitetail Genetics.